Good afternoon. I'm your host, Enzo Mecca. And I'm your co-host, Isabel Sayed. I had met this young lady at a trade show not too long ago, and I was just fascinated by what she was doing. And uh, I, I wanted to interview for the longest time, finally getting the chance. So um, what she does is she combines art with intuition, and I also understand she's an empath. So she puts it all together for clients. We're going to find out how she does that in a second. For myself, I, um, I actually graduated with a diploma in applied art. So I'm really familiar with art. I, it, it's, it's, uh, it's something I've loved my whole life. And uh, when I'm, whenever I'm doing whatever I'm doing, uh, my eye is always on composition and color and design because it's just something that brings me joy. So uh, with that in mind, Jeannie, here, by the way, this is Jeannie Marie from Jeannie Marie Intuitive Drawings. Welcome to the interview. Thank you so much. It's an honor to have this opportunity. Great. So uh, I'm curious how you developed this technique. Now, I, I know that uh, you were an artist way before you started doing this specific, if I could call it a modality. Um, what made you decide to use your intuition with your art? sense um well with all due honesty when we do art when we're children and throughout school and some of us enjoy it more than others and i was probably on the enjoyed more than others so that was pretty that would be the cap of uh, my involvement in art and then as i grew into an adult i got distracted and uh, uh, pulled into adult responsibilities throughout that mm -hmm. i got uh, tired and laid down and um Years into that, I was looking for uh, release and some light and self-discovery. And uh, one of those things that I uh, um, allowed myself to uh, uh, venture with my curiosity was there was a uh, workshop that was offered. And uh, it was a, a different, as you say, modality. And it was, yes, a form of intuitive art. Um, I had gotten through the uh, third level of workshop, loving it and um, doing, uh, you know, very comfortable in the whole process. Um, but something changed. Um, a shift occurred. And basically, um, it's really hard to explain except that um, things were processing much differently. And then I it realized very quickly that uh, something new was being born. Um, so I allowed myself to disconnect from where I was and discover more of what seemed to be uh, being born. Um, being the art and the intuitive drawings. Um, you know, I don't know how to embellish from this part on, but uh, I started to uh, be curious with it and trying to discover what exactly was occurring. So I was physically, emotionally pulled to do the drawings. Say I was losing sleep, but I was not um, having any repercussions of it. I was literally just drawn into it, pulled and loving every minute of it, uh, quite juicy. And so <laughs> um, I invited a lot of my friends to um, participate in the involvement of it, in my discovery of it, and doing experiments, so to speak, and just seeing, um, letting the people uh, validate, that's a poor word to use, but yes, I think it's, a, it's a proper at this moment also to validate that there was something occurring. Um, you were going to say something, Enzo, forgive me. I oh, I was just curious, you know, whenever Isabel and I meet intuitives, we're always curious about how they do it. You know, everybody's familiar that uh, you can talk to spirit guides, you can just get downloads. Uh, there's always a, just a tiny shift in difference in how people do it. So how does it work for you? I, I understand you get into a sort of a trance and then what happens? Well, as I say, I get into a meditative state and um, it's not trance-like, so to speak. It's more like an allowance. I always take deep breaths and I make a clearance and I basically, I, I mindfully and consciously put all of Ginny aside. Um, yes, I get into that state and I always start off with an intention. It's always a heart-based intention, never malicious, always for mine or anybody else who is participating their highest good. Essentially, I'm, I'm, not, I'm in prayer, and I, I ask for guidance from source, spirit, um, God, to work through me, and for whatever it is that is uh, being sought out uh, to flow through in the form of art on the paper or on the canvas. And, and from the client side, if there was a client sitting with you, 
what's their involvement with it? Do they ask you questions? Do they want you to go a certain way? How does that work? Well, um, to say that anybody has ever been with me when I've uh, done uh, worked through the process um, would be false. It's never occurred and it's never needed to happen. And that's kind of a good thing because inconveniently, the smallest or the, well, yes, the smallest uh, uh, canvas that I would draw on um, takes anywhere from two to five hours. So that you, that's why it would wow. be convenient. Mm -hmm. Every single individual I've had the honor of um, channeling for them, they've been from a distance. And so that that was part of the, I go back to the word experiment to validate, yes, there was some something truly happening in exchange and allowance truly, truly happening because the intention of, of what the prayer is and whoever was participating, even from afar, um, was certainly occurring. And um, that was, well, that kept drawing me in. <laughs> yes. I'd like to continue because I don't think, I, I know I haven't made it clear of what exactly my process is. And I, I say I don't know. And all I will do is be able to explain is what I understand and what I experience. Mm -hmm. Like I have already said, I get into a prayer, um, I, I, I request a heart-based request. And so either I'll be looking at the blank cardstock or the white blank uh, canvas. I will be staring at it and they will be staring back at me and I will start to see random lines, geometrical shapes, blobs, swirls, just one at a time already on the canvas. And I kind of feel it out and I will feel certain to me. So I will oblige with, I always start with the black permanent marker. And that process continues as I'm guided to turn the page of the canvas and time goes on and I'm seeing my eyes, my Ginny eyes are seeing something emerge. And that continues as I say, until I feel, I feel the solidity of it that it has completed and it's ready to speak. Um, yes. <laughs> And wow. is this something that you do in segments or have you actually, I mean, you said that it can take five to 10 hours. So, do, you know, how often does it happen that you actually sit down and like in one sitting it comes together versus, you know, in bits or. Mm -hmm. That's a, a really good question. <laughs> so depending on the size of canvas so far that I've had the privilege of working with, they can either take from two, honestly, so far to 14 hours, depending. Wow. So, yes. So that is a really uh, good question. <laughs> Just, I, I don't have much of a social life. <laughs> <laughs> so for the ones that where I'm like, I, I pretty much will be committed. And um, it's not a mindful commitment. It's a spiritual, emotional, I can't help myself commitment that generally goes throughout the black only process. And then at that point, whether or not I feel it, I'm called upon or I'm requested to or I, to go ahead and do the color, yes, I think it's safe to say that that is something, a task that needs to be uh, done the next day or whatever it is when, I, when it's, there's an open opportunity. Yes. <laughs> One line or uh, abstract um, shape at a time I'm guided, I will already see it on the canvas and I, I, I will oblige is the word I say because I see and I do as I'm told um, and I will put the line or the uh, smudge on the canvas and that process continues until I absolutely, I will feel that it's done. I will see things starting to, um, as I say, my Ginny self will see things starting to emerge and um, I will uh, be getting a bit of a story. Um, most certainly, I feel things go through me. Now, um, physically, my body will react uh, to the energy that is flowing through me, and it kind of guides me in um, uh, how I'm stroking across the canvas, and uh, things will happen such as my heart will start pounding, uh, my breathing wow. will change. Um, cramping in my arm whatnot if I'm uh, you know maybe perhaps I'm I'm having fun as a swipe across the page um, but then all of a sudden I'm guided to stop uh, abruptly things of this nature because I know that I'm in an open state any kind of emotion that uh, floods through me I'm able to identify that it doesn't belong to me mm -hmm. so if anybody feels inclined to ask me and uh, to, for me to share my experience of a personal drawing I've done for them these things can help me uh, um, navigate better the description to relate to them um, for what more information that they're you know to solidify their seeking um, if they wish and I say it like that because I really do um, 
and courage. And of course, I've developed this uh, strong feeling upon my own experiences. And I really do feel it's important to encourage your own looking within yourself and, uh, you know, discussing with your, yourself and your other voices and your other selves and, and not being influenced by outside uh, people or things, but more so being inspired. So in that, I always encourage people to uh, make a relationship with their drawing before they ask and have, give me the honor of sharing my experience of their, their channel. I'm curious about something. Um, because I remember when I first saw your earlier work, it was always black and white. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. I started seeing color. So mm -hmm. when you're doing this, are, while you're in the process, are you th thinking in black and white or is color coming in? So all the ones that I've had the honor of doing personally for others, it's all about the seed of, an intent, of intention and allowing. And so when somebody comes and comes to me, they've already, whether they're conscious of it or not, they've already um, compliant to an energy and exchange. And so mm -hmm. beyond that, they may make it um, a mindful decision and, and, and a knowing of what it is that they're seeking and be able to ask that. And with that, again, the seed of intention. So with me holding it for them in my heart space and them just, well, they're seeking. So they're already asking and together the support will create that allowance. So nobody has ever been with me it's always been from a distance so knowing every time i just allow and and have that opening um i it seems that everything just flies through. i don't have an explanation for you guys things just flood through and they you know they seem to resonate with whoever the drawing is for um and even for myself um and it blows my mind all the time and that's another one of the things that keeps me go coming back it, that's just one of the things that keeps me coming back. Now, you are absolutely right. There has been a change in what is uh, um, the majority of what I'm creating or what's being created through me. You're absolutely right. And that's, I don't know how else to explain that except um, expansion and change. And it's not only within myself. It's with, um, it's with the guidance of, of everybody, of, of everybody, the people, and it's in the sharing and the, and the inquisitiveness and the asking. And, and so I'm, it, we're doing this together. So there's a couple of different ways. Now, this is from my observation from the people. There's a couple of different ways a drawing can uh, uh, serve you better. And this is just my explanation from my observation. A, a client may choose that black is, is perfect for them. And from what I've witnessed is that is because um, the lines blend and marry with one another and they're very fluent. And there's less distraction. And sometimes that's perfect. That's exactly what somebody requires and needs, just the black and white and the marrying of the two. And then there are other souls that uh, either will be inspired or they're requesting more and they're ready for. And so for those, there's ease, there's transition between the colors and the lines, and there's a marrying of the two, but there's also distinct, this, it, each color is a, has a distinct story and they're not confused by them. So how do I explain this a little bit better? Because a lot of it I don't understand. I'm just witnessing and experiencing and sharing and things, wonderful things seeming to happen and occur. I believe that for some that it might be distracting if, we res if they decide on the colors because they might see a block here and a separate block here and be discouraged from the marrying of the two and how stories actually unfold like tapestry. So that an individual will know or whatever it is they're attracted to. Why and how they got to the colors? Well, um, probably because I was inspired. I personally was inspired by somebody um, lighting a fire up my behind. And uh, I love going back to the color. I mean, um, I, I get it. You know, black and white can be so clear. You know, people may yeah. might need that. It, you know, there's no... Uh, uh, there's no confusion about what's happening, you know, the lines meeting together. But with color, I'm more of the color person, I think, because I think with color, you have dimensions and layers and textures, and it really gets juicy. It's, it's like a, a layered cake, you know? There's flavor in every layer, uh, yes. whereas black and white is just black and white. But maybe sometimes uh, 
that's what you need, you know? Uh, like you said, you, there's different clients for different reasons. Yes, aesthetically, they both offer uh, you know, um, good things, uh, eye candy, so to speak. Um, but you're absolutely right. Always, um, what I know to be true is we always get um, what we require at that time. And sometimes it's simplicity that is exactly the nourishment we're needing. And sometimes we need a bouquet or a buffet, so to speak. It's, we get exactly what we need. Um, I believe in that. I believe in it because, uh, well, I've lived it. I've lived it, and I've, uh, um, it's, it's been proven to me in my, in my own experiences. Well, speaking of speaking of buffet and and your your personal experience and proving and, and your, the validation that you've received, I would love to hear about um, one of the pieces of uh, artwork behind you, uh, either or really. I'm just wondering. I'm curious. Are, are these some things that you've um, made for people for for some clients, or is this some of your, uh, you know, personal creative expression? Mm -hmm. So, yes, yes, and yes, a, a lovely lady on uh, uh, social media that I had the honor of, um, of doing a, a personal drawing for her. And um, quite often when I do do personal drawings, um, clients are uh, kind of overwhelmed with, uh, what should I channel? I don't know what to channel. And so it's quite nice to, for, to have the request of doing somebody's spirit essence. And um, well, that essentially that kind of shifts as we evolve and yes. Right. So I'm, I'd like to take this moment because um, I think this is, well, it's something to be, to be shown. But this lovely lady, um, again, I, I don't know, I haven't drawn for anybody in the same, same building, but I don't know if you can see this, guys. Maybe I'll bring it a little closer. Yeah. But I channeled her spirit essence, and it came out and like so, and, and I see predominantly that there's a lion. And what I found out after the fact is she's a Leo. So that's kind of cool. And she surprised me one day by sending me a, a photo of her with her fresh tattoo. Wow. So this is, this is a really neat thing. And I, um, again, this was never my idea. This is something that just kind of, you know, came out and with, with people and lots of people are looking for something that's unique and, uh, you know, spiritual, let's, let's face it. And so this is a, a nice outlet. So yes, we do. I'll do uh, personal drawings and, um, uh, the spirit essence, which is a really popular, what can I say? It's a common one for um, people that are kind of tongue tied, kind of like I am right now. <laughs> Hardly. I, I do. I, I do um, drawings for myself all the time um, because I love it because, uh, because it's a, a little piece of heaven when I'm in that space. And it's very, very um, stimulating throughout the process and most certainly um, at the end of the process. So it's very self-fulfilling. So when I was at the at shows and I'm growing and learning and my experiences from going to different shows, I'm learning to, um, I'm going to use the word, equipped myself appropriately. And one of the things that has, you know, emerged is, you know, having canvas ready there on you know at site um, and uh, so how do we channel that that was a bit of a how do we channel that source or spirit and uh, quite simply um, for instance uh, this one here the one behind I'll, I'll say a little different but this one here and, and as well as a nice other handful mm. I simply I simply trust and I know that source spirit universe knows where this belongs, knows who this is going to speak to. Um, my intention was just to be open and let whatever flow through. And I trust in that. Um, and so it's, I look forward to meeting whoever is going to be putting this, you know, on <laughs> wherever in their closet, on their living room wall, I'm not sure, but um, we'll have to let you know. But that's basically, I have faith in that. And that's, that's occurred a couple of times hmm. where I've set that intention and allowed it to happen. And quite frankly, as soon as, um, the introduction between the client and and the drawing has met then they said i'm out of it it's between it's between them two they take they go home with each other <laughs> <laughs> i'm just wondering jenny if you've ever actually made anything like this at a trade show like while you're there um and if that would be something that you think you could do um do you think you could connect with that you know that prayer or that state mm -hmm. in that context 
So there has been a couple of venues where I've had the um, opportunity to do that. And quite frankly, it's because it's such a slow pace. Mm. So um, when I'm doing the drawings, um, I'm focused on them. I'm giving it my all, even, you know, and when I have the opportunity of meeting somebody, they deserve my all too. So it's a, it's a full focus. And so I really can't really fully commit to the drawings. However, right. With slower venues, I have pittered at them and then completed at the, uh, them after the fact and presented them as this was at this uh, um, you know event and so on. And most certainly, the energies um, experienced throughout the day showed themselves as a, you know abstract image on the canvas. So that's always fun. Cool. I have been fortunate enough to attend a couple of very large venues recently, and so I haven't had the time to sit down and, and to do that. If, you know, my, hmm, you know, I have to say, my eagerness would love for that to happen because my, my mind says, wow, that would be very fruitful for me. Um, however, I really just need to let it be and let it flow. And so if, if, if this is meant for me to um, condense the time and have this emerge, you know, in a different time, time frame, then I'm open to that. If it's not meant to, then I'm open to that too. I, I'm really just kind of enjoying the experience and seeing where it goes. And so far what that's uh, um, grown to is larger canvases, more time. <laughs> right. I'm curious, um, would you consider something like um, making a video of the process? And would you, for example, just have it playing on an iPad while you're at, at, a, at a show, then people could sort of see some, some progress without you being distracted. Mm -hmm. You can give your 100% to the people as they come by. I think that's a fine idea. I've done something a very uh, simple, similar to that, and that was just basically freeze frames of, of uh, photos of the progress. Um, but I think that's a wonderful idea, and I understand that that would um, have comprehension of the process. It would be a little easier for everybody. I, I understand. Somebody could something that I, I thought as I looked at your Facebook page and, and looked at some of your your art and creations is I wondered how how do you think everyday people can um, can tap into their intuition through the creative process you know if you were to give a starting point to someone what, what would you say like go for it you know do that try this yes I, I encourage everybody to try there is an artist in everybody we're all intuitive it's just about allowing and loving what we discover that's my experience. One um, technique that I learned at the workshop, and I'm very proud to share this, is um, try putting on different, uh, um, different music, um, fast, slow, and they all have a different vibration. And get used to shaking out whatever is in you, or you know, set it, settled in you, shake it out, and get used to allowing the frequency to flow through you and transfer onto the page. You know, no different than we allow ourselves to dance in the living room like no one's watching. You know, that same kind of get it out, feel it, and just let her flow. I, incur I say that all the time at trade shows, actually, and it's, uh, it's quite enlightening because um, there are a few people. It's uh, comical, too, on an entertaining level, where I'll see somebody from a distance. And they're just, uh, oh, yeah, oh, what's up? And then they inch up closer and closer, and then they share that this is something that is similar to what they do, too. And so the fact that this is so great, the fact that, and I am putting myself out there because I don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> the fact that I'm putting myself out there gives them, the, you know, the, the encouragement that they can put themselves out there. So it just keeps going. So it's mm -hmm. really great. It's like, you know, it's a constant spark. Yes, quite often people will come and, and ask about that same thing you just brought up. Yep. Right. <laughs> It gives people permission, almost like we need permission to, to um, tap into that creativity or to, if, if we've, I know I was just having a conversation with someone today about 
how she has, she said she's kind of stuffed it down or, you know, stuffed it under the rug because she never felt that it was good enough or that she could really go anywhere with it. Um, but yet the calling or the urge is still there, but it's more of a, like this, you know, con inner conflict. Like, do I honor, do, is it good enough? As opposed to um, just, you know, dropping all the, releasing all the expectations and really just being in that process and enjoying the process. Um, well, life, I don't, feel um, as I know it isn't about being rigid it's about fluency you know, that's when things will come and, and they'll pass you when they're ready to go it's definitely it's about fluency and allowing and it takes practice mm. and we've been practicing we've been doing really really well of being about being obedient and being rigid and doing as we're told and staying within the lines and you know um, mimicking what we see you know which is a good this is a good example uh, uh, opportunity for me to say this is clearly no these images are clearly no mimic they, they they are what they are in their own abstract unique form as you and you and you and, and, and I and everybody else is Ginny Marie so you're in Workworth Ontario <laughs> Yes, I proudly live in a old white school house. It has ton, tons of character, and uh, it's most certainly the most home I have ever had. I am so proud, and I love it dearly. And it's situated just outside a small community um, called Workworth, which is well. You are in Montreal, correct, Enzo? Yes, the two of us. So I'm approximately, and you as well, Isabel, I'm approximately three hours um, west of you, or approximately okay. an hour east of Peterborough. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Yes. And um, obviously you work uh, over the internet. Um, mm -hmm. In case people want to reach you, uh, could you give uh, an email address or a, mm -hmm. a website, whatever you'd like to give? I would be happy to. My email address gets quite a giggle and it's Marie hugs a lot at <laughs> gmail.com. <laughs> if I see you in person, you'll understand why I have <laughs> that email. Um, just another form of healing and sharing and expressing is, is what it is. Awesome. I love it. Yes. Um, I also have a Facebook page, Jenny Marie's Intuitive Drawings. And uh, I also currently have an Instagram page, Intuitive Drawings. Oh, you must do really well on Instagram. Well, I'll tell you what, I think I have, well, I know I have um, some, some attention and, and people are admiring what they see. Um, I do believe that it, um, uh, there's a lot of us that are uh, not sure exactly what is occurring on the campus. <laughs> to be fair, yes. It's a quite a unique thing. So this is why I'm ever so fortunate that, to have this opportunity, uh, you guys, to, for you to interview me today so that I can get a little bit out of what it is that is actually occurring, whatever that is. <laughs> yes, you got to get out there. That's the only way people are going to hear about you. And thank you for letting us into that process too. That's really cool. It's not everyone who can, I'm sure it's not hard to put into, it's, it's not easy to put into words. It's not, no. <laughs> thank you so much for doing this. It was a sheer pleasure to see your artwork and to talk to you. Indeed. Thanks, Weiss. And um, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.